Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for the noise there. If you can hear that, where our house is under construction. Just a minute. There, it was finished. So um, I just uh, my name is Ali Dazel, and I have been working for We Are Memory Keepers for the past 11 years in various capacities. Um, currently, I manage their social media accounts. And I also am a ambassador, so that means I represent them on television, at workshops, trade shows, um, opportunities. Um, and I have loved working for them uh, for the past 11 years. They always strive to be innovative and uh, to fill the gaps in the craft industry, um, whatever is not out there that, that needs to be out there, they're always constantly thinking of, of what comes next. So I love that. Um, so today we're going to let me just show you what that looks like. Um, so hang on, I'm going to just move that off my screen. I've got a little pop up window. There we go. So that's backwards, of course, but this is what it looks like. Um, and it's a, it says Mary, and it's just a really fun glittery golden crisp, uh, you know, uh, Christmas tumbler, so or holiday tumbler. So um, we're going to go ahead and first um, talk about the parts of the spinet uh, collection. We are super proud and, of, and grateful to my wife for the opportunity to work to create this hey, Allie, um, could, program. Could we, could we try moving your mic a little bit higher? You know, I'll pick my necklace off because I, if I move it higher, I'm afraid it's going to make noise. So we'll move that out <laughs> no, of the way. <laughs> Not a problem. And then this can go up higher and then hopefully me. Yeah, I think it might be. Uh, Is that better? Picking, yeah, I think now it'll pick up your voice a little bit more than the okay, background. Than, than the noise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no problem. Um, okay. Okay. Um, you just never know when they're going to show up. Like sometimes they're here, sometimes they're not. So <laughs> it's a crapshoot. Um, anyway, so spin it tumbler program. So it's the first tumbler making program in the craft industry. And we're really proud of uh, partnership with Michael to bring that to you. Um, it features, of course, the spin it pro. This is the um, tumbler turner. So this is the uh, where the tumblers can cure and dry and where you can um, create so um, this is unique because it's got a removable arm, so you can twist this off. Um, I won't take the time to do it. Well, maybe I will. There it goes. Okay. Um, so you can take this off. And what's really neat about that is you've got this ridged base. So if you're doing like painting or hydro dipping or something that requires you to move that tumbler around, um, you can grab it with this and, and do whatever you need to. And then while it's still on here, you can place it back the machine. Um, so that's really handy. Um, another feature that I love is that it has this, um, this arm right here, support arm. So you can do up to 32 ounce tumblers on this, which is great. Um, and then this, um, so it holds it's really sturdy and with, um, pieces. So that's the feature. The other thing, the first bolt bring in craft stores, of um, up to now you've been able to buy glitter online. So we, we did that. So come in glitter mixes. I don't know if you can see that. There's different sizes and colors in there. There's kind of medium sized glitter, like sort of fine glitter. There's all kinds of colors. I've got a few more over here. Here's the super chunky glitter. Look how fun that is. Big fat pieces. Um, and then the even special materials. Um, I know some people like to make really uh, mica powders these are powders that you use to dye the uh, resin the epoxy resin there's um, glow in the dark there's color changing um, that changes color based on uh, sunlight or temperature options fluorescent uh, so so much um, let's see what else do we talk about there's a oh, comb brush. Mine is very, very well used, <laughs> but this is great because this allows you to apply uh, resin, you know, good. All right. So now we've got the sound working, hopefully better. Thank you so much for your patience. I apologize for that. It was working fine. I taught a class just two days ago with it and it was working fine, but today it's 
being difficult for some reason. So um, thanks for sticking with me. All right. So I think we talked about the um, SPINIT program and we're ready to make our Tumblr. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to kind of go through some preparatory things that you need to do um, beforehand. Um, I've already done them just because there's a lot of wait time and dry time in between the steps of this process. So I've, I've prepared step outs just so you guys can see the whole process in this class. The first thing you're going to do is this is an 18 ounce tumbler. Um, and these are available at Michael's at the Art Mines. Um, you can get them either just plain with stainless steel um, finish, or you can get them painted white. Um, uh, I always start with my tumbler painted white because that gives you a nice clean canvas to work on. It makes your colors pop, your glitter looks better. If you leave it stainless steel finished, um, your glitter is semi-transparent. So you're gonna see that, that gray through it and it just doesn't look as pretty. So always start with a nice coat of white paint Another thing you can use is a paint primer mix um, that's a spray paint. I, I think that's great. I think Rust-Oleum has one, Kryolan has one, um, but I highly recommend the paint and primer because I feel like um, additional coats of paint and resin stick better to that. It grabs onto that better and, and holds on better. Um, so if you do start with a um, painted tumbler from Michaels, which I did on a couple of these, that's gonna have a glossy finish on the paint. Be sure to take some fine grain sandpaper and just sand that down so that it's, it's not glossy anymore. Um, and that, that helps because your, your paint and your resin are gonna stick better if it's not a glossy paint surface. You always wanna use like a matte paint or like I said, the best is a primer and paint combination. So um, white paint, and then I took a little gold. You, you can use spray paint or you can use um, you know, regular paint. I just used this pretty metallic paint. Um, and we're just going to get the bottom of this, maybe like the bottom third. And it really doesn't matter. You don't need a nice, pretty line because you're going to cover this with glitter and it's going to look gorgeous. So just get that, that painted um, and let that dry fully. Follow the instructions um, for the manufacturer of your paint and it'll be ready to go. So if we can grab the overhead camera now, I'm going to show you how to attach this to the tumbler. Um, and the first thing I like to do is just um, cover the inside lip with some tape, masking tape or washi tape works great. Painter's tape works fine. Um, something that's kind of low tack, but that's gonna, gonna seal tightly. And the reason why I like to do that is because um, that avoids getting the resin inside your cup. If you do get some inside, you can remove it. Um, I usually do that with like a, a craft knife, a really nice sharp blade, um, but of course, it's easier not to get any in there. So we're just gonna tape this off. And since it's a round surface, I use uh, small um, pieces of tape, you know, like maybe one to two inches. Well, probably more like one and a half to two inches um, just because it's easier to go around um, and then overlap them. Be sure to overlap them so that nothing leaks through. All right, so once I've done that, now I'm ready to put this on my tumbler. And the way I do this is I squeeze all four of these together and then just slide that on there. And that way, usually it's, it works pretty well to keep your tape from getting stuck. Sometimes you get a little piece right there, but as long as it's covering the lip, you're good to go. Then I slide this on until those little pieces are inside. You don't want anything to touch this, this support arm here. The other thing you need to make sure of is you want it to be level this way and this way. So vertically and horizontally, you want to make sure it's level. Um, now, this is a USB powered machine. And the reason I love that is because it's portable. You can move it anywhere. You don't need to worry about access to a power um, outlet. And what I do is I just use my my battery pack that I charge my phone with, and it works great. This does not require a lot of juice. So um, I had two machines going on this all night long last night with this one battery, and it's still like almost completely um, charged. It's three out of four lines or whatever. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in. Um, and then the other thing I love, whoops, I lost a, an AirPod, is that it has an adjustable speed dial and other machines don't have that. So this is really nice because if you need it to go slow because you're applying something carefully, you can do that. If you need it to go faster because you're wanting it to cure, you can do that. So I usually turn it on and I kind of check and make sure that it's level and even, it's not warped and you know, kind of funny. And I need to just adjust it slightly 
to get it a little bit straighter and then I think we're good to go. Let me look at that one more time. All right, yep, that looks good. Okay, so now we are ready to mix some resin um, and we're going to use this. This is the um, clear coat, clear cast from Alum Alumalite. Um, and it's a high gloss and it's two part casting resin. Make sure it's clear, it doesn't have a color to it. Um, and that usually comes with some uh, cups, measuring cups and milliliters, and then some stir sticks. Let me pull out one of those stir sticks that's in there. Um, and that, that's for stirring. You can also use you know, a silicone um, stir stick as well because you can reuse that. All right, so let's uh, get some gloves on. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. And I've covered my work surface with a uh, paper here so that resin doesn't get on my work surface. And you know what, to be honest, I'm gonna put my hair back just one second because resin in the hair is not fun. I'm just gonna tie it off real quick so that it stays out of the way. Okay, and then glove. And I, I like to have a few of these gloves handy just out of the box and ready to go because if you're trying to dig, you know, somewhere to find it with resin covered hands or gloves, you know, it's difficult. So I also recommend having um, a pile of already torn off paper towels, maybe five or six ready to go. And then some cotton balls. And here's another thing that should always be handy is, um, your, uh, sorry, I just had a brain freeze. Um, what's that stuff you take the nail polish off with? Um, acetone? Yes, acetone, oh my word. 47-year-old um, brain, sorry about that. Okay, so acetone, pure acetone and some cotton balls because this will remove any mistakes in paint or in um, resin uh, if you need to do that. So having that handy is great, okay. So we're going to go ahead and, and pour the resin. So it comes in two parts, part A and part B. Um, we're going to start with part A. That's the thick part. That's the actual resin. And we're going to mix up. Oh, the other thing you need is, is some kind of a container to mix them in. Okay, so this is just a little paper cup. Um, so I'm going to measure and the, and the um, ratio is one to one. So you're going to do equal parts. And that's really important because if you don't do equal parts, your resin will not cure properly. Um, and you've wasted all that time and all that money. And so it's really important that you get those ratios just right. Um, some people use measurements on a cup. Some people use an ounce scale. You can do that. And that way you can just measure it, make sure you get, so it's, it's all about the volume. You wanna make sure you have equal parts volume. So we're gonna do about 15 milliliters of each. Um, part. Okay. So there's that. Let me just make sure that now that's settled. That's yep. That's 15. Exactly. Okay. And then we're going to pour this one in 15. This pours a little easier. This is the hardener. So this is when you add these together, there's a chemical reaction and it starts to harden. So you have a 30 to 40 minute work time with this particular resin. The most important thing you can do honestly is read the manufacturer's instructions of the particular product that you are working with. Very, read it very carefully before you start. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour these in. I'm gonna start with this one, part A, and I'm gonna use my stir stick to just scrape all of that out um, really well, as much as I can, because again, we need that ratio to be just about perfect. Um, and then it will cure properly. So I'm gonna scrape around and get as much out as I possibly can. Now, these cups can be reusable. If you wipe that uh, material out, the liquid out before it dries, before it hardens. So you can reuse these plastic cups over and over again. All right, now let's add the next part. This is a little easier because it's not quite as thick. We'll scrape that around. And then again, I recommend following your manufacturer's instructions very carefully, reading them all ahead of time. But this particular type of resin, um, you need to stir these two parts together for at least three minutes. All right, and that will mix everything together and it will instigate the chemical reaction. Um, and so you, that's another tip right there. Very important that you do at least three minutes. 
If you understir, if you don't do three minutes, you will not have properly cured resin and your project will be wasted. Um, I would rather have you over stir. You don't really do any damage by stirring another minute or two beyond three. Um, I'd rather have you over stir than under stir because um, then your resin will cure properly. So we're gonna go ahead and stir that. And while I'm stirring, and well, one other tip for stirring is you don't want to stir too quickly or vigorously because you'll add air bubbles into your mixture. There will be some air bubbles that you can't avoid, um, but we can take care of those um, as we go along through the class. I'll tell you how to take care of those. But you just wanna not stir too quickly or vigorously so you don't get too many air bubbles. Also, as you stir, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom to get all of the um, liquids mixed together. All right, so now let's talk about um, some resin safety, epoxy safety. Um, again, really important to cover your work surface, to cover your hands. It is a skin and an eye irritant. Um, you can wear goggles if you want. I have my glasses on. Um, you also should use it in a well-ventilated area. You should have windows open. You should have a fan going if, if um, you can't have windows open, but you definitely need to have a well-ventilated area. Um, some people who are sensitive to um, you know, if you have sensitive lungs, like maybe asthma or, you know, allergies or things, some people find it better to use a mask while you're working with it. I have never had a problem not, but that doesn't, you know, doesn't guarantee everybody will. So if you have sensitive lungs or breathing issues, I would definitely use a mask when you're working with this. Um, but it's a really fun medium to work with. I have really enjoyed it. Um, and it makes a lasting uh, finished product. So um, these tumblers are something that will last for many years to come. Um, now, you can't wash these in the dishwasher um, because they're stainless steel. So even without the resin, you can't do that. So you, you do need to hand wash these. Um, but again, they, they just last for many, many years. I have lots of uh, tumblers that I've had for several years, and they're lots of fun. Um, all right. So I think we're just about done. I think I need about 30 more seconds here to get this fully um, we have a few questions. If I can ask you them while you continue stirring. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so one, we have the question of how much resin did you use for this project? And do you have tips for knowing how much resin to use for various projects? Let's say like if there was a, a smaller tumbler or a bigger tumbler. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. So generally with the 18 ounce, um, I usually mix uh, 15 to 20 for adding glitter, the first layer of glitter, and then I'll do another 15 to 20 later on for the final coat. Um, but that's going to vary depending on your size. So what I recommend is just hop online and search um, for a, a chart that has, they'll have them online. There's so much information online, a chart that has the amount of resin you need to cover um, the size tumbler you have because um, they're available online. Um, the resin is called Illumilite. There's other brands, but that is my, my personal favorite. I really like that one. Nice and clear, beautiful, um, smooth. It's just easy to work with. Um, this project, I actually mixed just now 30 milliliters total of resin because we're going to do a couple coats during this class. So, um, all right. Any other questions? Okay, that's, all of them. that's good for now. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll check back later. Okay, so that is definitely ready to go. Um, and so I'm gonna put that aside, that stick aside, and we're going to start this spinning. And the other thing you're gonna wanna do is protect your machine. Um, I have a, a silicone mat, you can use paper towels, you can use whatever, you know, scrap paper, um, but this is just gonna protect your machine because the glitters, I mean, the resin's gonna drip, the glitter's gonna drip. You can see I've already got stuff all over that. But the nice thing about a silicone pad is it peels right off when it's dry and then you can reuse that. Um, now, when you do add the glitter, I usually use a, a separate piece of paper to put under for each glitter color because that way I can, um, I can take the glitter and just kind of fold that up and dump it back into the bottle or the bag. Um, but today I'm just going to use one because um, I'm not going to take the time to um, dump all the glitter back in separate colors because that's just too time consuming for this class. So let's turn this on. We're going to go kind of slow because we're applying the glitter. I mean the resin, sorry about that. And I'm going to take my silicone brush 
And we're just going to start pouring this on little bits at a time and kind of moving it around as I pour it on. Um, and the nice thing about this resin is it's self leveling. So as this spins around, it kind of levels itself out, but you do want to brush it so that it gets everywhere. It needs to be applied to every single inch of the, of the tumbler. Um, so I'm probably going to use a little more than half of what I made up. Again, I think, you know, around 15, to 20 ounces is usually what I use um, for a tumbler to get the glitter on. This is just to get the glitter on. So this is this is the epoxy method of adding glitter. You can use um, like Mod Podge. A lot of people like to do that. Um, so there's other ways of applying glitter, but this is my favorite. I feel like this is the easiest and the most effective way to do it for me. So. Um, now you do want to put some on the bottom, make sure that bottom is totally covered. And then as it spins around, we're just going to swipe There's a little bit more right there. Swipe up so that it goes from top to bottom and it's completely covered. Um, a little bit right there. Now you can use too much resin. Um, and the way you're going to tell if you have too much resin is as you're working with it and as this is spinning around, you're going to start to see resin pool around the bottom and it starts kind of bulging out. If you start to see that you've got too much resin on and you can just take your silicone brush and just um, scrape some off um, so that your cup won't end up with bulges at the bottom or pooling anywhere so that it'll be a nice smooth shape. So that's just a tip about adding your resin. Um, as you're doing it. Um, and also on the bottom, you can put too much there and that will mean that you won't have a flat, even surface. So when you sit your tumbler down and place it on the counter, it'll kind of lean to one side or the other. So just be sure that your bottom doesn't have too much. It's just a nice thorough, but thin coat. So we'll just keep sliding this around and making sure everything's covered. And the way I can tell everything's covered is by the shine. That resin is so shiny. So as it's spinning around, I can see that shine. And if I see um, a break in the shine, then I know I need to cover that space. So as you can see, the tape up there is helping because I'm coming all the way to the top and anything that goes over is landing on that tape instead of on my machine or inside the cup. So I think we're just about there. I, do you want to take a little bit off the bottom here? I'm going to wipe it on that silicone mat because then I can just peel it up. A little bit on the pulling on the bottom here. So I'm just going to scrape that off. All right, and then I'm going to go back over and re smooth that. This is going around. Okay, just a little bit more right there. Okay, that's looking good to me. All right, let's get some glitter, guys. This is my favorite part. Okay, so that I'm going to place on the silicone mat because then I can peel it off. Okay, we'll put that extra glitter aside. Okay, so we're going to start with our white. This is the fine, I think this is the fine white glitter. It looks like sugar, it's really beautiful. And I'm just gonna start at the top and I'm using like a plastic spoon and I'm just sprinkling like I'm sprinkling sugar on my cereal. <laughs> I don't know if you guys did that when you were growing up, but that was one of our favorite things to do is my mom wouldn't let us have sugar cereal, um, which was great, but then she'd let us sprinkle a little bit of, you know, regular sugar on top. So this reminds me of my childhood. Okay, so we're just going to go down and we're going to leave just a little bit, maybe like a half inch down at the bottom, a half inch before we get to the gold spray paint. Okay, so we'll just leave that little bit blank down there. We did have a question about whether you could put glitter directly into the resin and then put it on the cup. On the yes, cup. you yes, you can do that. Um, that that does work. I find it a little easier to sprinkle it on though. Sometimes with the glitter, when you mix it in, 
you're not sure if you have enough until you get it on your cup and then you have to add more. Um, and that makes it a little difficult once you've kind of already started. So um, you, I know people who do that and it works fine for them. I they probably just have a really good system of, of you know, measuring glitter and putting it in there. But for me, this is the easiest way. Um, but yeah, you can do that. I have done that before when I didn't want like full glitter coverage. I just wanted like a little bit of glitter in it and that works well. Okay, so now we're gonna go for gold on the bottom. This is like medium kind of size glitter. And we're just gonna sprinkle it right here. We're gonna leave a little blank space right at the seam there where the paint, meet, the gold paint meets the white paint. And again, if I were doing this not in a one hour class, I would be changing out that paper before I change to the next glitter color so that I could dump that excess glitter back into my bag. So you can save your glitter. But since we have a limited amount of time, I won't do that today. All right, I think we're good on this. Now we've got to cover the bottom. And so what I usually do is I take a little bit and I just sprinkle it down on the paper. And then I pick it up with my fingers and just kind of smush it in. And I keep doing that until my fingers don't stick anymore. So there's no more tack. So that means that everything's covered with glitter. I might need a little more than that. Let me just keep working with what I've got and then we'll add a little more. Just kind of keep smushing that glitter into the resin. I know some people like to take the cup off and just you know sit it sit the bottom down into the glitter. You can do that too. Um, I prefer to just do it this way. I don't want to stop it or take it off at this point, but you can do it that way. Okay, just about there. It's not sticking to my gloves anymore very much. Keep going, just a bit more. And I'm just gonna check the edges here. That's a good place to check right along that edge there, the corner sort of, to make sure that's fully covered too. That's a spot that tends to be a little hard to get. So you'll wanna check and make sure that glitter gets there. Okay, fantastic. Let me try to get some of that off. Okay, now let's go for the glitter mix. This is. Uh, the Roaring Twenties glitter mix. It's beautiful. It's got rose gold. It's got silver. It's got regular gold and lots of different uh, sizes of glitter. Chunky all the way down to fine. So we're going to put that right at the seam to kind of cover up that seam there. And it's totally fine if it kind of overlaps the gold and the white. That's the idea. So this is sort of like your, your border, your seam coverage, but it doesn't need to be perfect. It sort of spills over. That looks really cool, I think. So now one tip as I'm doing this is if you want really nice straight lines with your glitter, one thing you can do is use double-sided tape and stick that around your glitter to create glitter stripes. So then you just apply your glitter to that sticky tape, the double-sided tape, and you have a really nice pretty um, stripe that way. So that's another idea that you can do as well. I think we're just about done applying the glitter here. Let me just go around one more time. Cover that up. A little bit more there. Okay, very cool. All right, so what you're gonna do is follow your manufacturer's instructions. I'm gonna pull up this paper now and carefully put that in my trash can so I don't dump it everywhere. Um, Follow your manufacturer's instructions and allow this to spin and cure however long it says. For this particular resin, that would be 24 hours. So you need to let that spin and cure for 24 hours. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and just let that keep going. I have another one that I've already completed and fully dried um, right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this going and I'll show you how to finish this up. So I'm gonna pull this up here again and cover this up. Now, once that initial coat is dry, you're gonna notice if you touch it, glitter is gonna come off on your hand. So we wanna seal that glitter. 
Now there is one step that you can do before you seal the glitter if you want. Um, but well, before you add another coat of resin, I should say, um, is that you can use a spray clear sealer to seal the glitter in place. Um, I find that if you use enough resin before applying your glitter, most of it will stay in place because you'll see as I work with it that it, as you're applying the resin and kind of you know smoothing it out, sometimes it will move glitter up where you don't want it. So you can spray it with a clear sealant and let that fully dry and then put the resin on. But in this case, since it's sort of like not perfectly uh, you know lined where the borders are, it's kind of a little bit mixed together, I'm not super worried about it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move on and add the resin. Let me get another glove on my hand and we'll get started. All right, so this time I probably have maybe 10 to 12 ounces of resin. This is just a sealing coat, so it doesn't need to be super thick. So I have 10 to 12 ounces of resin and I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and just start applying this. And one thing you can do if you have the multiple colors here is work with one color at a time. So you can kind of start with the white and then move over to the gold and get that resin on there so that the glitter doesn't really move um, you know, as you're applying it. So that, that's one way to do it. Um, but like I said, if you use enough resin on that first coat when you apply the glitter, then it usually doesn't move too much. So go ahead and just kind of smooth this out as much as possible. And then we'll move down to the fold. A little bit more right there. And just same, same thing. You've got your tape in there. Um, uh, now let's talk about that tape. So, so usually I remove that tape after my last coat is on and it's been drying for about 12 hours. And then I can usually pull it off without doing any damage to the cup. Um, you can leave it on for the full 24 and then take it off. And I use a craft knife to cut the resin uh, there to take, to take it off because the resin will bind to the tape, but you can just use a craft knife and go around that lip to really clean it up and get that, cut that resin off. So that usually works um, after 12 to 24 hours, you should be fine to be able to cut, cut into that. So, all right, I think that's good for the top. Let's go ahead and put some glitter down here on the bottom. Um, one thing you also can do um, before you add this um, as your, um, the, so the original one here, I'll move it back into the frame right here. As this is spinning before, I, I should have mentioned this before, but you can use your hand to kind of smush that glitter down because some of that chunky glitter won't automatically lay flat. Um, so you can just use your hand and kind of smoosh the glitter down into the resin so it lays flat. So that's just a tip. I usually like to do that. I forgot to mention that before, but you just smoosh that, the glitter down so it lays flat so it'll be nice and smooth when you go to add your second coat here, which is what we're doing. Okay, so let's continue on. We're just gonna keep applying resin to this bottom part and to the very bottom as well to get that nice and smooth. All right, and just spreading. You don't need a super thick coat this time because we're just kind of Feeling that glitter in. Get some of that off the bottom and move it up here. All right. And then once you've got that gold part, let's get a little bit more right there. That gold part really covered and smooth. Then you can move on to that transition um, order there. And that's where you have to kind of watch where your glitter is going. Okay, that's a little bit right there. Move that over. And this I'm, I'm going just kind of on feel too as my silicone brush goes across it. You can feel where there's enough resin and where there kind of isn't. It's a little rougher as you go across the parts that don't have enough resin yet. 
Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna take this a little bit left and I'm just gonna take a little bit and smooth out right here. All right, no, but that looks pretty well. Feels pretty smooth. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of carefully work that over. And then I'm just gonna do a few strokes to smooth it out from the bottom to the top, just being careful not to move that glitter from one section to the other. And then I think we're good. This is looking good. A little bit right there. Okay. Okay. I love it, fantastic. Okay, so I'll let that sit for 24 hours. So I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. And then we'll talk about the final touch. I'm gonna to move this out of the way as well. And that goes in the trash. That needs to go on the silicone mat to dry and that goes in the trash, okay. So I'm gonna move this paper off so that when I work with my vinyl, I don't get any resin on it. Okay, and I'm gonna take my gloves off. All right, let me pull my material over. Okay, so once that final coat of resin has fully cured after 24 hours, then you're ready to add your vinyl. Um, and so I've um, got a free SVG file um, that we, if, if we could share, I don't know if we already shared that link in the chat, but if we could do that, that would be fantastic. There's a JPEG file and there's an SVG file. So you can use whichever one you want. So I went ahead and already cut that with my silhouette machine. I used this Oracle um, gold metallic vinyl. It's removable. Um, you could use permanent as well if you want. Um, but we're also going to put a coat of resin over it just to seal it in so that when you wash it there, you don't have any issues. Because to be honest with you, like, I feel like permanent vinyl, some permanent vinyls really aren't that permanent. So I like to seal it with another coat, thin coat of resin just to be sure. So I'm going to now weed this. So once you've cut, so I don't, if you haven't cut vinyl before on your machine, um, your machine should have a setting for vinyl and that cuts just the vinyl and not the backing paper that it's sitting on. Okay. So we're going to remove the excess vinyl that we don't need. That's called weeding. And there are tools to help you do that um, available at Michael's. And you're just going to pull carefully and get that off. Now, this particular, oops, this particular file has uh, an outline and, oh, hang on, let me get my fine point. Okay, there we go. It has um, an outline and the solid in, inside, the filled in. So you can use either one or you can do both. If you, can, if you cut it in two pieces of uh, two colors of vinyl, then you'll have like a different color outline. Like you could do a gold outline and then the red solid inside of, of the word Mary. So it's really up to you. There is an option for two colors if you want, but you don't have to do that. So you can see there's like that really thin outline. Uh, that wants to stick on. Okay, so, oh geez. All right. So we've got that. And then I'm just gonna pull off, let me set this back down kind of where it needs to be. And then we'll pull off that outline. It's not quite right. So it looks like my blade didn't quite cut through this. So it may need, depending on the kind of vinyl that you have, it may need a second pass um, to cut 
just get through. So, but you know your machine better than I do. So um, you, you know how, how to get this to cut really well on your machine. Okay, so I'm gonna press that down. And then we're gonna carefully get rid of that outline. So I'm not gonna use it, but you can if you want. All right, so you'll need the vinyl, obviously, for this. And then you'll also need some transfer tape. And I will show you how to use that transfer tape in just a minute. And that stuff is magical. It helps so much to um, transfer your design onto your project um, to get it straight and to make it look good. All right, so, oh, I see what happened next stuck onto the top there. There we go. All right. And then here's where your weeding tools come in handy is to kind of get those little middle parts out. And so you don't have those in when you transfer onto your project. And I recommend using something with a really fine tip for this part, definitely. Um, something that's helpful as well is if you have a larger piece of vinyl, um, it's helpful to use a, a scraper, like a little scraper. Okay, so now I'm just gonna press that down in, make sure it's really stuck on there. And here's where the transfer tape comes in handy. Ooh, I need scissors. Give me one sec, I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors so I can cut. Oh, here they are, okay. Piece of transfer tape. So just gonna pull up a little corner of this. Don't need very much, it's a small design. Just gonna cut a little bit, cover enough to cover the word entirely. All right. Just place that right over the word. And then I like to use a scraper, a you know, bone folder, or whatever, to kind of press out the bubbles and make sure that that's really stuck on there. And then we'll pull that up. And that design should come right with it. Okay. And then you're you can toss this and you're done with your mat. Whoops. Okay. Now, let me grab this one and I'll show you how I applied it. So I've already applied one on here, but I'll show you how I did that is you're just gonna take it and make sure you've got it straight, you know, hold it above, and make sure you've got it straight and exactly where you want it. And then go down and then you're just gonna take this and just rub over that just to make sure that it gets nice and stuck on there. And then you can peel it up carefully. Yep. And as you're going, if it starts to come up, you can just use your scraper and go back and get those individual spots that are being a little bit stubborn. Go over that one more time. Okay, there we go. And then what you'll do is once you finish that, um, I don't have a third spinet machine, so I can't really show you, but um, you're going to go over this again with a really thin layer of resin um, and then let that cure for 24 hours again. And the reason why, again, like I said, that I like to do that is because, um, and you can see I put it a little bit lower on this side, so it just depends, you know, wherever you want to put it, you can put it. Um, it's, the reason why I like to do that is just because, again, like some of this vinyl that, that claims to be permanent really isn't super permanent. And so it just ensures that that's not going to come off as you wash it, that the vinyl will last as long as your cup will last. Um, and you can, you know, add whatever you want. You can put a name on there. You know, it's, it's really fun. So you can personalize it. 
So, um, so let's hop back up to the um, front camera and I will answer some questions. Um, so can UV resin be used for tumblers? I have never used UV resin for tumblers. That's a, it's a quick dry um, resin. I have used it for like jewelry, for pendants. I've used it for paperweights. I've used it for other things, but I have not used it for resin. I mean, for tumblers. So I, I don't really recommend it for tumblers. That's a good question. Um, SVG file. Um, okay, so, oh, question about how long to let it spin. So the spin, it says not to let it run for more than six hours. So, okay, I'm gonna be really honest. That's one of those things where I feel like they have to say that legally <laughs> just to cover themselves, but it, it can run for 24. It can run overnight. It, once you, again, follow the instructions for your resin, there are some resins that you can actually touch it and stop spinning it after six hours or eight hours and it's fine. Um, this particular kind, I let it spin for 24, um, just to be sure, because it, it can still be tacky after, you know, 12, 10 or 12 hours, it can still be tacky sometimes, depending on how much you've got on there. Um, so I don't know. I, I think you're fine. You're fine letting it go for overnight or for 24. That's a good question. I've never had a problem with that. Um, SVG file. Oh, did we get that link added into the chat somewhere? Um, we did not, but I'm working on that. Okay, great. So it might be available on the on the video um, later. That'd be great. So what, yeah, when the, and it may be 24 hours or two days, then you post the video. So that'll right. be up in the in the description on the YouTube video. Um, can you put an adapter on the spinner for use for ink pens? That is coming. We are working on that, and that is coming to you guys. Get the the um, the little low down there. I don't know that we've officially announced that, but yes, that is coming. Um, there's also an uh, I believe an ornament arm that you can add to if you want to do globe ornaments um, as well. Have you tried crystal lac to replace epoxy? I have not tried crystal lac, so I don't really know whether or not that works. That's a good question. I'm sure that you could find that answer online somewhere, and somebody's probably tried it. Um, any other questions that you guys have about the spinet program, about the tumbler that we made? Um, no, we're good. All right. Oh, how do you clean your silicone mat? Okay, good question. So silicone uh, does not bond with the resin. So anything that you use that's silicone, like I know that you can buy um, silicone mixing cups. Um, silicone brush, silicone mat, and that just means you can reuse it because you can actually peel off the resin. So once that resin has hardened and cured, you just peel it right up. No problem. It comes right off. So that's super easy. And then as far as the glitter goes, I usually rinse the glitter off of that silicone mat. I use like a tub so that I can capture the glitter so I'm not sending glitter down the drain in my sink. Um, and um, I think that's it. Clean the brush. Um, also, if you get on your brush, um, if you get resin on places that you don't want it, you can use the acetone, but be really careful because that will strip color and, and things like that. So just, um, you might want to use like not a hundred percent pure acetone, maybe like a nail polish remover would be a better option for, um, resin on your brush. Um, all right. That looks like that's all the questions. Thank you so much guys for joining me. Um, I really appreciate it. And again, we, we so appreciate Michael's working with us and partnering with us to um, get this wonderful spinet program available so you can make your own custom tumblers. Oh, I did have a few, my bad, that I wanted to show you really quick just so you can see the different options that are available. And these are all classes that we've done with Michael. So you can find these on their YouTube channel. So this was last year's um, holiday one. It's a winter wonderland tumbler. And we made a um, coaster to match because there, there are, let's see if I've got them here yet, coaster molds, silicone molds. There's a hexagon and a, a circle and a square. So you can, you can do those. So if you have leftover resin, if you made too much, um, you can use it to do something like this. Um, then we did this this past fall, last month or the month before. So this is a kind of a fall themed glitter spiral, which is really fun. And then last summer we did this. Actually, this was two summers ago, I think. This was um, this is using the um, color changing mica powders. And so when you take this out in the sun or when you put something hot in here, it changes colors, which is really fun. 
And this is the hydro dip tumbler. Um, and this is where that base comes in really handy with the ridges so that you can remove the arm with the tumbler on it and dip it in your paint. So this involves dipping paint and spinning it as you dip it and then you get that really cool look. So these are all classes that you can find on the Michael's YouTube um, channel. So if you wanna make more tumblers, there are some, some great ideas. So thanks so much for joining me, you guys. I wish you happy holidays and I hope you enjoy your tumbler making. See ya.